afternoon, three are the reporters. Good afternoon, we are the reporters. So we're now on topic five, and we're going to discuss about. Controversies and conflicting views in Philippine history. The two phases of the 1872 Cavite mutiny. So, learning outcomes demonstrate the ability to formulate arguments in favor or against a particular issue using primary source. So before anything else, I am Cherilyn and Sunya, the first reporter of the group, and I'm going to discuss about the background of this topic. The 12th of June of every year since 1898 is a very important event for all of the Filipinos. In this particular day, the entire Filipino nation as well as Filipino communities all over the world gathers to celebrate the Philippines Independence Day. 1898 came to be a very significant year for all of us. It is as equally important as 1896, the year when the Philippine Revolution broke out owing to the Philippines' desire to be free from the abuses of the Spanish colonial regime. But we should be reminded that another year is as historic as the two of 1872. Going back, our country, the Philippines, consisting of more than 7,000 separate islands in the Western Pacific, declared independence from Spanish rule over 120 years ago. The Filipino flag was unfurled for the first time on the day of June 12, 1898, at an inspiring celebration which also featured the first public playing of the Philippines national anthem, indeed, the nation has made great strides. Moreover, Philippine independence is known to be one of the most important events that was accomplished by the Filipinos, since it brought back our identity and our legacy. We often hear the word independence today, and every time we do, we think of happiness, freedom, and victory. But as a matter of fact, a lot of struggles, violence, and revolts occurred before we finally attained independence. Two major events happened in 1872. First was the 1872 Cavite Mutiny, and the other was the martyrdom of the three martyr priests in the persons of Father Mariana Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, namely Gamburza. However, not all of us knew that there were different accounts in reference to the said event. All Filipinos must know the different sides of the story. Since this event led to another tragic yet meaningful part of our history, the execution of Gumburza, which in effect a major factor in the awakening of nationalism among the Filipinos. Indeed, we tend to forget the dark and rough side of it. Many lives have been sacrificed, strength and courage of Filipinos have been tested, and one of these revolts was called as the Cavite Mutiny, which forged 1896 Philippine Revolution and the execution of the three martyr priests in Burza and the 1898 Philippine independence that we, the people of the day, enjoy. Furthermore, this topic will let us acknowledge the two accounts having different sides of the stories. First, the Spanish version plan or planned conspiracy following the response to injustice specifically the Filipino version of the incident, and lastly, unraveling the truth, considering the four accounts of the 1872 Cavite Mutiny. In the major event of 1872 Cavite Mutiny, we will discuss the two opposing perspectives of the Spanish and Filipino version. The account of a cemetery Ividal, 
documented the Cavite mutiny is an attempt by the indigenous to dispose of Spanish authority in the Philippines due to the elimination of advantages enjoyed by the laborers of the Cavite arsenal, such as exemption from tribute and forced labor. Authorities of that time received information about the great uprising of the Filipinos against the Spaniards. They knew that there would be assassination of the officers, masters, servants, and the governor himself. Vidal documented the event and highlighted it as an attempt of the Indios to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines. The call for secularization, Filipinos wanted to install a new hari in the likes of the chief priest Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora. During the celebration of the Virgin of Loreto, there were fireworks displayed and it was mistook as a signal for revolt. 200 native soldiers under the leadership of Sergeant La Madrid rose up in arms, assassinated the commander of the fort, and wounded his wife. The aftermath of the battle is that thousands of Filipinos were sentenced to prison and worse, death. One of the most notable deaths during the event was the execution of the three Filipino priests that symbolized patriotism but also served as a strong warning for those who wanted to overrule the Spanish government. Account of Governor General Rafael is This man, the Turbulian, was part and left by native clergy, citizens, and trainees as a protest against the government abuses in Egypt being to report. Filipinos wanted to explore at the top of the government with priests and a chosen leader, Jose Mariano Gomez, or Gos, or Jose, as he told Zamora. So Rafael, he is here to eat with Cheras, was a Spanish military officer, political leader, and a statesman who became the governor general of Philippines from April 4, 1861 to January 8, 1863. Who was the governor general during 1872 of the Timothy which people exit? of 41 of the Martiniers, including the Gomborza Martis. This colonel also act as Governor General of Puerto Rico from March 1862 to April 1862. The 1872 Pavitimitini was precipitated by the removal of long-standing personal benefits to the workers such as tax and forced labor exemption on order from the Governor General Rafael D. The second version of the Cavite mutiny is the response to injustice, the Filipino version of the incident. So, Dr. Trinidad Hermini Hildo Pardo de Tavera, a Filipino scholar and researcher who wrote the Filipino version of the incident. For him, the incident was a mere mutiny by Filipino soldiers and laborers of the Cavite Arsenal. So, yung Cavite Arsenal is yan yung lugar kung saan yung pagawaan ng armas ng mga Espanyol. So, bakit niya nga ba nasabi na mere mutiny lang? It is because the mutiny started when General Iskerdos abolished their privileges. So, nagkaroon lamang daw ng mutiny dahil nga dissatisfied sila sa pagtanggal ng kanilang mga karapatan. Yung mga karapatan na yun ay exem exemption to tax to polo. Yung polo ay yun yung sa pilitang pagawa. He also indirectly blamed Governor Esquerdos for his cold-blooded policies for he believes that it was a cover-up for Filipino organization of political club. So, sinisi ni Tavera si Esquerdos dun sa nangyaring mutiny dahil naging masyado siyang malupit at mahigpit sa mga sandalong Pilipino, particular dun sa mga nagtatrabaho sa Cavite Arsenal. Pero bakit nga ba pinatanggal? At pinagbabawal ni General Esquerdos ang pagpapagawa ng paralan para sa mga Pilipino. Kasi nga, naniniwala siya na nang dahil yun, sa so tingin niya, parang planado lang ng mga Pilipino na gumawa ng ganito para sa isa pang mas malaking plano na i-overthrow ang mga Spaniard. January 20, 1872, about 200 men headed by Sergeant La Madrid rose in arms and assassinated the commanding officer and Spanish officers in sight. So, yun nga, dahil tinanggalan sila ng privilegio, sila ay nag -aklas. They were expecting support from the bulk army, kaso nga lang hindi dumating. Kasi nga, the signal was supposed to be the firing of rockets from the city walls on that night. Unfortunately, yung putok na yun pala ay hindi rocket, kundi fireworks in celebration of the Feast of Our Lady of Loreto. 
So sa akala nila na hudyat yun na pagsisimula ng pag-aaklas, kaya sila nag-march patungo sa Cavite Arsenal, not knowing na wala palang reinforcement na darating. So the news about the mutiny reached authorities in Manila. And then, General Izquierda immediately ordered the reinforcement of Spanish troops in Cavite. And then, nagkaroon ng malawakang pag-aaresto doon sa mga sinasabing involved sa mutiny. Hinuli ang mga liberal thinkers, mga middle class, at iba pang involved. Then, after two days, the mutiny was officially declared subdue. The very belief that the Spanish friars and Izquierda used the Cavite mutiny is a powerful lever for a full-blown conspiracy. Not only the native army but also included residents of Cavite and Manila, and more importantly, the native clergy to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines. So, ginamit lamang doon ng gobyerno ng Espanya at mga prelly yung sitwasyon at pinalaki na sinasabi na iyan ay isang malaking plano ng mga Pilipino para sa revolusyon laban sa mga Espanyol para walang reform na magaganap. Then, during that time, central government in Madrid announced its intention to deprive the friars for the power of intervention on civil government in the direction and management of educational institutions. This turn out of event was believed by Tavera, prompt of the friars to do something drastic in their dire desire to maintain the power in the Philippines. So, kaya nga natakot yung mga prele, they did something para lamang na hindi sila malisa ng power. So, para ma-prolong yung power nila, yung, kasi yung mga time na yun, liberal na ang Spain sa mga colonies nila. Natakot ang mga prele na matanggalan sila ng power. Kaya naman, they make sure na hindi matuloy ang pagpapagawa ng mga institusyon para sa mga Pilipino. Kasi pag nagawa na magpatayo ng mga institutions para sa mga Filipino, friars can no longer participate in civil governance as well as to administer and manage universities. During the reign of Ferdinand VII of Spain, a decree by Sigismondo Moret promoted the fusion of sectarian schools run by the friars into a school called Philippine Institute. So in the intention of the central government of Spain, to install reforms, they welcomed an educational decree that promotes fusion of sectarian schools into a school called Philippine Institute. So sectarian schools are obviously run by friars since they are the ones who were affiliated to religions. And dahil sa pag-colonize ng Spain sa Philippines, we are introduced to religion and back then, education was almost run by churches. So dito po, ang tanong na mag-arise is, why did the Spanish government promote this fusion? Bakit nga ba gusto nila pag-isahin ang sectarian schools at ang Philippine Institute? This is because they want to extend their power. Though they already colonized the Philippines, but still gusto pa rin nila na ang lahat ng authority ay mapasakin nila. And to be exact, gusto ng prile na mapulong yung authority nila sa Philippines. This improvement was warmly received by most Filipinos in spite of the native clergy's zest for secularization. So ayun, walang nagawa ang mga Pinoy, ang mga Pilipino, kundi tanggapin na lang ang educational decree ni Moret. Kasi nga, they are still under the power and authority of the Spanish government. Walang magawa ang mga Pilipino, kundi sundin ang utos ng Central Government of Spain, though naghahangad din sila ng secularization. So, Filipinos want to disassociate themselves from the authority of the Spaniards and from any religious or spiritual concerns. So, next, Tavera says that the Madrid government came to believe that the scheme was true without any attempt to investigate real facts. So, dito po ang mga prile ay natakot na na mag-deprive yung power and authority nila sa Philippines especially in managing educational institution and in civil government. Kasi nga, sa panahong ito, nagiging liberal na yung Spain. Spain wants to discard traditional values and alam ng mga prile na isa sila sa mga yun. So they use this Cavite mutiny as an advantage, reporting na 
this Cavite mutiny was a revolt to attack and destroy the Spanish sovereignty. So naniwala agad ang Madrid, Madrid government without any attempt to investigate kung ano ba talaga ang totoong nangyari. So next, the various account of Cavite mutiny led to the awakening of nationalism and the outbreak of Philippine Revolution. French writer Edmond Lauchutz's account confirms that the event happened due to discontentment of the Arsenal workers and soldiers. The writer, however, dwelt more on the execution of the three martyr priests which he witnessed. So here, po, it focuses on the execution of Gumborsa priests, Nasila Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, at Jacinto Zamora. So they actively supported the secularization movement and also active in the publication of the newspaper La Verdad na may kas- ibig sabihin sa Tagalog na ang katotohanan. But on February 17, 1872, Comborza were executed due to the false accusation of treason o pagtatak and sedition. So hindi lamang ang Comborza ang naparusahan pati na rin yung mga nakilahok sa Cavite Mutiny. So dahil sa pagpatay sa Gumborsa at sa ibang nakilahok sa Cavite Mutiny, in, 90, in 1896, Philippine Revolution happened led by Andres Bonifacio. So itong si Edmund Plautschutz, kinonfirm niya yung account ni Tavera saying na ang Cavite Mutiny ay nangyari dahil nga um, sa discontentment of the arsenal workers and soldiers. Considering the four accounts of the 1872 mutiny, there were some basic facts that remain to be unvarying. For the first truth, there was dissatisfaction among the workers of the arsenal as well as the members of the native army after their privileges were drawn back by General Izquierdo. I stand upon the Spanish version of the Cavite Mutiny because, although the abolition of privileges was enough to trigger civil disturbance and insurrection, this argument is not strong enough to suffice the uprising of the Filipinos because the revolution led to aggressive assassination of the governor general, the massacre of the Spaniards, and the death of 200 men contingent led by Sergeant La Madrid, and more importantly, the execution of the three priests, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. I don't think that the Filipinos would take such big of a leap of faith and sacrifice life just so they could achieve reformation. I think what they have in mind is to have full custody of the government's operation. And so the native clergy backed the insurgents against the Spanish friars. The mutiny was committed by workers owing to labor difficulties and somehow it all sums up to be a huge conspiracy. Furthermore, the friars were aware that the Spanish government were trying to individualize the church and the government operations. Knowing that they would lose their privileges, they took advantage of the revolt and plotted it to demonstrate their importance to the colony of Spain. It was not mere mutiny but a grand conspiracy, justifying why the Spanish government took extra measures to execute the three martyrs who were allegedly thought to be the mastermind so that they could serve as a strong warning for those who intend to overrule the Spanish government. So, General Escardo introduced the reading of three policies that made the Filipinos move and turn away from Spanish government out of this class. Because General Escardo refused Jose Montero illegal policies, which said that Filipinos have no rights to be a government leader or to have the power of violence. Third unraveling truth, the central government failed to conduct an investigation in what truly transpired but relied on reports of Esguerdo and the friars and the opinion of the public. So dito po, ang central government of Spain is naniwala agad sa report ng mga fraile at na Esguerdo nang dahilan daw ng revolt ng Filipino soldiers and laborers is because they want to attack and destroy Spanish sovereignty. Where in fact, ang totoong dahilan kung bakit nag-revolt ang mga Pinoy is because na dissatisfy sila sa pag-abolish ng kanilang mga privilegio. 
Ito ay ang exemption to tax at exemption sa pagawa o polo. The happy days of the friars were already numbered in 1872 when the central government in Spain decided to deprive them of the power to intervene in the government affairs as well as in the direction and management of schools, prompting them to commit frantic moves to extend their stay and power. So, kasi desperate na sila yung time na yun, what the friars did is that they took advantage of the mutiny and presented it to the Spanish authorities as a widespread plot aimed at removing Spanish sovereignty for the archipelago. Fifth truth. The Filipino clergy members actively participated in the secularization movement in order to allow Filipino priests to take hold of the parishes in the country, making them prey to the rage of the friars. By this time, a number of Filipino priests were becoming conscious of their rights and were now becoming active and united in defending them. From among them, there arose a leader, a Filipino priest, namely Father Pedro Pelaez, from Pagsangahan, Laguna. But his untimely death in 1863, during an earthquake in Manila, deprived the civilization movement of a really respected and influential leader. And then forward came Father Jose Burgos, regarded as the protege of Pelaez. Both of them were passionate in establishing the rights of the seculars. For Pelaez, the more important issue was the rights of the secular clergy being violated by the friars. This is also true for Burgos, but there was one more important aspect of the issue that the seculars were being denied of their right to govern a parish because of their race and inferiority to Europeans. Burgos was now evolving into a religious nationalist. Nationalism in any form was not about to be tolerated by the Spanish government. Hence, secularism must be destroyed. Filipinos during the time were active participants and responded to what they deemed as injustices. Indeed, Filipinos have been taken to the streets in protest for more than a century. Most of the first rallies were conducted by laborers and peasants. On January 20, 1872, 200 Filipinos employed at the Cavite Arsenal staged a revolt against the Spanish government's voiding of their exemption from the payment of tributes. Due to this, the Cavite mutiny led to the persecution of prominent Filipino secular priests. This is the execution of Gumbruza was a blunder on the part of the Spanish government for the action severed the ill feelings of the Filipinos and the event inspires Filipino patriots to call for, for reforms and eventually independence. There may be different versions of the event, but one thing is certain, that the 1872 Cavite mutiny paved the way for momentous 18 and day. So what was the reason why Gumburza was executed? The priests were charged with treason and sedition by the Spanish military tribunal, a ruling believed to be part of a conspiracy to stifle the growing popularity of Filipino secular priests and the threat they posed to Spanish clergy. On 17th of February 1872, in an attempt of the Spanish government and Friday, Russia to instill fear among the Filipinos so that they may never commit such daring act again. The Gumburza were executed. The death of Gumburza awakened strong feelings of anger and resentment among the Filipinos and solidified the nascent nationalism felt by so many. They questioned Spanish authorities and demanded reforms. They wrote propaganda materials that exposed the abuses of the friars. 
grief and outrage over their execution would make way for the first stirrings of the Filipino Revolution. Thus, making the first secular martyrs of a nascent national identity, the martyrdom of Kumbuza influenced Rizal as he felt the passion and desire to implement reforms and attain equality for the Filipino people. With the injustices he had witnessed, he felt the need to avenge the death of those who sacrificed their lives for reform. The death of Gumburza gave birth to the propaganda movement. Furthermore, on August 13, 1898, during the Battle of Manila, Americans took control of the city. In December 1898, the Treaty of Paris was signed ending the Spanish-American War and selling the Philippines to the United States for $20 million. With this treaty, Spanish rule in the Philippines formally ended. The road to independence was rough and tough to tuddle. Many patriots named and unnamed shed their blood to attain reforms and achieve independence. 12th of June 1898 may be a glorious event for us, but we should not forget that before we came across the victory, our forefathers suffered enough. As we enjoy our freedom, may we, may we be more historically aware of our past to have a better future ahead of us. And just like what Elia said in Nolan Mitangere, may we not forget those who fell during the night. Both the Filipino and Spanish versions presented that the reason of the mutiny was due to unfair decision of Gobernador General in the abolition of the privileges in terms of taxes and forced labor. Cavite mutiny, uprising of 200 Filipino troops and workers at the Cavite Arsenal on January 20, 1872 which became excuse for Spanish repression of the embryonic Philippine nationalist movement. There may be different versions of the event, but one thing is only certain, that the 1872 mutiny paved a way for a momentous 1898. That's all. Thank you.